Well, thanks a lot. Um, so this is going to be a rapid fire. <laughs> Uh, so, um, so I'm going to talk about not only uh, text messages, but uh, some of the interventions um, related to messages as well. And uh, so the first question is, is the text message the, mes uh, the magic pull we are looking for? Um, just to quote the, one of uh, a recent uh, New York Times opinion, and uh, uh, they said it's like uh, parents who create their own vaccine schedule rather than anti vaxxer and we, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, a study we recently conducted in which we saw improvement in uh, vaccination coverage through automated calls. So before we move forward, we have to look at um, the, the, uh, the phone coverage. So it has been a leapfrog as far as the mobile phone uh, coverage is concerned. However, we also need to look at uh, that, uh, of course, the, the coverage is, uh, is all over the, the world, but the, uh, if you look at the smartphone penetration, uh, there, there's still a difference in developed and developing countries. Uh, overall, there are around 7.7 .7 billion uh, mobile phone users uh, with uh, around 32 SMS mobile phone on daily basis. But if you are a text user, so for example, WhatsApp, I've already texted 32 messages uh, up since morning. Uh, so one thing which we need to keep in mind is uh, depending upon the intervention you want to use. So if you're using it in a developed country, uh, uh, and if you want to uh, look at the generalizability of your intervention, then, it is, uh, then you have to look at the type of intervention you would like to use. So just to uh, give you a, a general idea, so SMS or short message system, it can be used both on smartphones as well as uh, non-smartphones. Uh, if you are using an app for text, so that is only used uh, in smartphones and automated calls can be used for both smartphones and non-smartphones. Uh, broadly speaking about uh, text message categories, so they could be reminders, educational messages, and interactive messages. However, most importantly, and most of the speakers in the, since morning have also talked about, we really have to understand what are the barriers, what are the reasons due to which uh, they're not getting vaccinated. And then those messages should be made around those barriers. So it could be educational messages, but is it vaccine hesitancy? Is it lack of knowledge? Uh, do we forget? Uh, is there lack of trust? Is it related to adverse effect or religious or social buy-in. So, the, so the, your messages should be made around uh, those barriers. I'll quickly go through a couple of systematic reviews. There have been few systematic reviews, both on uh, childhood vaccines and adolescence vaccines, uh, as well as maternal vaccine, and uh, both in developed and developing countries, and the data is uh, quite promising, and they have shown that uh, there is increased uptake in vaccine uh, uh, uptake and series completion uh, as compared to the control group. Uh, uh, also, this, uh, this study was focused specifically uh, in uh, low middle income countries and also showed uh, statistical improvement in vaccination coverage. I uh, would like to point one study though which talked about conditional cash transfer, but conditional cash transfer through SMS so that they linked it with, uh, with, uh, with, with messaging as well. Uh, shifting gear a little bit, I'm going to talk about a couple of my study, and uh, this was uh, uh, this is an SMS-based monitoring uh, uh, technique uh, which we used. Uh, uh, this was in Karachi, so as you know, uh, Pakistan and Karachi are still uh, uh, we still have the unfortunately the polio epidemic there. So we developed a, a two-way messaging system in which two messages were sent. First, asking, "Does your child?" Uh, received a vaccine or uh, did, uh, did the vaccinator visited your household or not? And did your child uh, receive vaccine or not? And this is in Urdu, so it was personalized according to the local language. And so the data we got, uh, or the answers we got, the coverage answers we got through SMS, automated calls, uh, and uh, LQAS, which is the uh, ground uh, monitoring technique. Uh, so the data was quite comparable. However, the data was collected uh, through uh, going house to house and um, and uh, and we collected their uh, basic data their phone numbers as well as their coordinates the question is how do we uh, scale it up uh, you know this was uh, a sample size of 3000 but we have millions of kids who are under 5 years of age uh, so a second step uh, uh, 
pilot study we did uh, using uh, 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 the tower coverage area. So we, we uh, identify high and low risk areas and send them messages without identifiers to that area and, and, and the answers we got, we were able to look at the coverage data. So, uh, so I'm, I'm gonna uh, talk about, um, about this uh, study which, were, which is funded through uh, Grand Challenge Canada. We, uh, this is again work in prog progress. We have the preliminary data. Uh, this is part of my PhD as well. And uh, using a mixed method, we wanted to understand whether mobile phone based uh, messages, SMS and automated calls can improve uh, vaccination coverage in a, a resource uh, limited setting. So we started with uh, pre-trial uh, pre interviews. So, so we conducted in-depth interviews to understand the perceptions and barriers uh, through which we were able to um, modify our methodology and finalize our content uh, as well. Um, children were enrolled at two weeks of age and were followed till 20th, 20th week of age. And the main outcome was to understand uh, the vaccine coverage at 14 week of age. The, there were four interventions, one-way, two-way SMS, and one-way, two-way automated calls, or um, uh, robotic call or IVR. We also did interviews after the, the trial to understand what worked and what did not, and why and why not. Uh, rather than using messages uh, uh, which were already available, uh, we, we made uh, messages according to uh, the, the participants and followed a, a six-step strategy, which was first literature search, uh, categorizing the content, uh, literature translation into, and back translation into different languages and according to SMS content and according to the automated calls. Uh, they were validated through in-depth interviews and after that um, we did discussions with the stakeholders and uh, finishing off with focus group discussion with the participants to understand, they really understand those uh, messages. Uh, data was collected uh, through, uh, through cell phones and went to the cloud. Uh, then it went to the portal and there we uh, uh, personalized those messages in real time. So, uh, uh, and the messages were sent according to the language of preference, according to the arm and according to the barrier. So at the, at the initial uh, interview, at the enrollment, we asked them what is the barrier they have for not vaccinating their kids, or what do you think is the barrier of not, uh, you know, barrier in vaccinating their kid? And so, what barrier they chose? Uh, we made messages accordingly. So, they, so everyone is going to receive educational, religious, adverse effect, and reminder messages. And a, uh, but if you say educational, uh, then you'll get more messages related to the ed educational barrier. And and so this was uh, followed by uh, we having different dashboards so that uh, we we made sure that it was. Um, the study was according to the protocol. So the key finding is that we had um, uh, access of 98%. It's not owning the phone, but 98% of the participants, both uh, this for the urban and rural side, had, uh, ac had access to mobile phone. And 54% uh, of the father owned the phone. Overall, there was no difference in intention to treat. Uh, however, uh, uh, when we looked at per protocol, which is uh, those who said uh, they want to be part of the study. Uh, th those who said they received the messages, self-reported uh, received the messages uh, and completed the study, there was an uh, improvement of 26% uh, in the intervention arm, uh, which is IVR uh, versus the control. So there was, so we saw an, uh, a 26% improvement in those who received the messages. We were also able to uh, identify what were the key barriers. So uh, major barriers were they, they either they forget, there were lack of awareness, they were not permitted by family members, the low trust in the government uh, program and religious belief and adverse effect. Uh, we also looked at what kind of messages uh, uh, they were preferred. Uh, also, uh, we looked at why they did, uh, why did uh, they did not uh, reasons for not receiving the messages. So overall, personalized messages, uh, were developed, uh, IVR uh, based personalized messages can be scaled up. The intervention is useful. However, too many families did not get the message and I think this is a major limitation and we need to do uh, knowledge translation to further understand this. Uh, to finish it off, uh, 
I think personalized uh, phone-based messages, uh, uh, interventions should be scaled up, uh, uh, and, and they should be integrated with the program, as some of the speakers talked about, that it should be not standalone programs, but it should be integrated in the, uh, in the national, provincial, and county programs. Uh, and it should not, and it should be part of uh, part of the EPI system itself. Uh, and once we we have uh, sufficient data, then this can be incorporated into uh, different AI and ML models. Uh, thank you so much, and I'm grateful to my study team and my staff and my colleagues.